Hello there, my name is Jason Schmaltz and I'm an AMGA Rock Guide Apprentice. And today we're going to continue our Jim to Crag series talking about rappelling. And this is going to be sort of a master class where we'll start off with some basics of which the motifs that I teach in the basics will be applied to more advanced scenarios as we go along in the video. And I want to give you kind of a sampling of the different scenarios you'll be approached with outside in the different terrains with you being able to use this video as a resource to pull on in those different scenarios to make good decisions. First of all, I want to highlight the basic rappel setup. So a basic rappel setup in almost every scenario will be an extended rappel. And there's multiple ways to extend a rappel. Uh, I'll show you uh, a couple ways in this video. But I'll start off with the most basic way, which is to take a 120 centimeter sling, girth hitch it to the climbing loops of your harness. And then I do actually two knots. I do one on the lower third, one overhand knot and a second overhand knot on the upper third. And these knots are basically fixed points now in the webbing once I've made them. And I like to have these sections serve as different parts of my personal anchor system in a rappel extension. The end is for basically a PAS system that I can clip into anything, okay? And this will just help me to uh, secure myself as I set up my rappel. So if I don't want to fully extend, but I want to have a short extension, I can clip below that first knot and have a shorter extension, be on a tighter leash in steeper terrain. The second knot is used for my actual rappel extension where I'll clip my ATC or in my case reverso. This is going to keep the rappel device away from where my third hand will be, which I'll put on in just a second, and allow for better control than if it was directly on my harness. From here, there's kind of a system I like to use to clip into any rappel that basically minimizes the chances of you dropping your rappel device. So I never take my reverso out of my carabiner unless it has rope in the slots. So before I undo the carabiner, I'll go ahead and put the two ropes in. And that kind of locks it in place. So even if I shook it here, it won't come off. Now obviously I could violently shake it and it would fall, but this minimizes my chance of dropping it as I clip my carabiner into the rappel device. You can become quite fluid in doing this. Again, keeping the device clipped in and then basically just unclipping and reclipping quickly and then locking down and now I'm in. Last piece of the rappel system is the third hand. I use the Sterling hollow block. You can also use just regular cord. I like the hollow block because it applies more friction, but it's important to understand there's no core in this loop. So as this strand wears out, you need to replace it because it's the exterior strands that are actually holding this together and giving it strength, okay? So the procedure is I'll clip that on to my belay harness, get the tab close to my harness, and that helps to keep that tab out of the way as I do my loops for my auto block friction hitch and then I'll lock that down. So from here, I have a fully robust system. This will enable me to be able to repel safely. If I need to go hands-free on my way down to get some gear out of the way or to move the rope down the, the rock or something like that, I can do that with confidence, not having to worry about keeping a hand on the rope. Uh, I know that it's not very common in recreational climbing to have a third hand, but I highly encourage you to start building this habit. As you get into bigger climbs, it's almost a necessity, otherwise you're just really asking for trouble. I do like to have my backup PIS. Normally this would be clipped into a master point or anchor system that I would have, but in this case it's just clipped into this ring. Uh, still decent if I'm on a huge ledge. Uh, this would be considered, in my opinion, uh, satisfactory for the scenario. But what I like is I can fully weight the rappel with no risk, and then I can go ahead and undo my PAS. From here, take your PAS, Clip it to your belay device. That way if one of these knots do roll, the furthest that this extension will extend will be to here. And now I can start my rappel. One of the most common scenarios you'll find yourself in rappelling is needing to clean anchors. And uh, although one of the safest ways to clean anchors is to just get lowered off the rings, there's many areas where you need to rappel instead of just get lowered. And so we'll cover that scenario here. So I've arrived at the top of my uh, top rope route. I've asked my belayer to take hard. I've taken the liberty of going ahead and pre-rigging my rappel extension device for this scenario, which is the Petzl Connect Adjust. Uh, so I just want to give you another example of a device that you can use. Uh, so in this case, I would go ahead and take this and clip into the anchor, lock this down, and go ahead and pull it tight. 
And from here, I can go ahead and weight this device. And now I can ask my belayer to take me off belay. So from here, I can pull up some extra slack and I'll tie an overhand or a figure eight on a bite and just clip it to my belt so that I don't drop it as I untie the rope. From here, I can go ahead and untie my figure of eight to put it through the rings. Now you could also keep your figure eight tied in and not have to do this backup and force a bite through the rings, but sometimes the rings aren't big enough to fit a bite through. So this covers more scenarios. Uh, if I don't, if I can't see the end hit the ground, I need to go ahead and close the system. And in general, it's a good discipline to keep the system closed on any rappel, including single pitch rappels. Uh, however, it is common practice that when you can see both ends hit the ground on a rappel toss, uh, that that's considered closed. You don't need to back it up with overhands. But anyways, uh, I'm go ahead and do it for this example. Uh, from here, I can go ahead and pull rope through. I can undo my knot now because there's no risk that it's going to go backwards. And I can pull rope through until I get to my middle point. Most ropes are marked with the middle point, so I know I'm good. I already got one strand on the ground still down at my belayer, and I can go ahead and take my other strand and toss it down. So from here, I need to go ahead and set up my rappel setup, just like I showed you before. But I'll show you a different order that's a little bit more advantageous in real life. So in theory, the rope is uh, hanging by 80 or 100 feet, so the rope is pretty heavy. So one good trick to do is to go ahead and rig your third hand first. And this way you can grab the rope and unweight it with the third hand so it's easier to put in my rappel device, which makes it less likely for me to drop it. So I'll rig my auto block just like before. And I can go ahead and test that, it's grabbing. And then from here you can kind of just pull out some slack. This is what I'll need for my rappel. Go ahead and let some material out of the PAS so that I can hook my reverso in. And then I just clove hitch the carabiner that the reverse is going to be in. Again, I haven't taken the reverso out. So just make an air clove. That's the easiest thing to do here in this case. And now I can go ahead and rig my rappel just the same way, the safe way that I showed you before. So I don't unclip the carabiner until I have the rope through. Unclip, clip, and lock. Go ahead and double check everything's locked. It is. And now I can go ahead and get my weight totally transferred onto my rappel system. Now that I got my weight on my rappel system, I go ahead and clean my anchor. And since I rigged the rappel system behind the anchor system, it's going to be really easy for, for me to get my anchor materials off. So first I'll unclip my PAS. I'll extend this a little bit and clip it onto my belay loop. Again, for the same reason, if my clove hitch starts to roll a little bit, which is extremely unlikely, the most it's gonna extend is this much. Go ahead and grab my lockers. Again, try to work one item at a time so you reduce your risk of dropping stuff. Look how easy the anchors come off with the rappel in the back. Okay, is this looking familiar now? I'm all set to go. Another application of rappelling is in multi-pitch climbing when you need to transition from climbing to rappelling. Uh, we have another video on the multiple rappels once you get going, but it's the transition that a lot of people lose efficiency and also uh, tend to drop stuff. So I'm gonna show you an uh, efficient transition. You can work on this on the ground like I am. Uh, and then take it with you outside. Uh, so come on up, Johnny. So as your follower comes up, Johnny's getting belayed up on a grigri, I'll go ahead and give him hands free. And from here, a lot of people would tend to just clove in directly to the master point, but we don't really want that because we want to access Johnny's end of the rope. His end is on top, and I can pre-rig my rappel if I can access it. So a good trick to access one end of the rope and multi-pitch climbing is to come on the backside of somebody else's clove. So we're gonna have Johnny come on the backside of my clove and he will clove in directly to this on his waist. So now he's safe, we're all locked in, me and him, and we can go ahead and clean this grigri up. 
Go ahead and untie that knot for me, Johnny. And we can go ahead and untie Johnny's knot. Now, if this were a precarious ledge or something like this, I might tie this off, but I have the pile here. Uh, we're gonna assume for, for now I'm on a ledge uh, and I don't need to tie this off for risk of dropping it. So I can go ahead and untie this and I can go ahead and pre-rig my rappel. Now, here's the important thing is you wanna pre-rig, again, underneath your entire system because we gotta clean all this stuff off before we can get started. So I'm gonna come underneath, again, go through the rings. Assuming this is a multi-pitch rappel, of course, I'm gonna tie it off and go ahead and pull this through to the middle. So now we have the rope pre-rigged and we're ready for rappel. So the first thing you wanna do is get somebody on the rappel system and close the system with a third hand backup. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and rappel first because assuming it's a multi-pitch rappel, I need to set up the next anchor. We're not gonna put that responsibility on Johnny today. I'll go ahead and use the Petzl Connect Adjust to get myself rigged in. So I've got all the elements on my belay harness now to start my rappel. So I'll go ahead and grab both ropes with the third hand just to set the bottom of our combined system. Lock that down. Go ahead and test it, make sure it bites. It does. And then I'll rig my rappel. And now I've set the system up, and we're gonna have Johnny set his rappel device above mine so the whole system's closed. So Johnny is gonna use a 120 centimeter sling with a similar setup that I used in the first example. So we'll girth hitch through both of his climbing harnesses, get the tab in on the end here. And then for new climbers, I like to use a triple action carabiner uh, is their PS, so now I know it's always locked. I don't have to remember, and I know if I tell them to clip into something and I can't see them and they clip into it, it's most likely locked. Go ahead and do my two overhand system so that he's got a semi-adjustable PAS. And from here, we'll take his rappel device, clip it just below his first knot, and we'll get him rigged in as well. So now Johnny's safe. There's no need for him to clip in with his PAS because I'm the back of the system. I'm the closed system. He can't repel past me, and I can't repel past his third hand. So now we can go ahead and clean up our system. So I'll go ahead and untie my original figure eight from climbing. And you'll see that this cleans up nicely. And we can do this safely because I've closed the system with my third hand. Johnny can come off his clove. And everything's kosher. And look how simple things have gotten. So you can see again, the rappels are stacked. Johnny doesn't need a third hand because when I get to the bottom, I'm gonna just provide him a fireman's belay. So he doesn't need to worry about a third hand either, which is great again for new climbers because they don't really know how to use a third hand. I go ahead and clean my anchor. Again, the rappel system is not weighing down the anchor because I put it behind it. I can use this for the next rappel station, ready to go. I'll go ahead and pull Johnny up close to the anchor so as I go down and the rope tightens, uh, he's not gonna get jerked around. He's just gonna get kind of pulled like this. And since he's extended, he's not gonna get fully pulled into the wall. From there, I'll go ahead and pull my rappel up. Triple check that everybody's locked. And I'm gonna go down first and I'll holler off rappel and Johnny will come down on a fireman's belay. Off rappel. Come on over this way. I'm 
more advanced rappel system you can use on a tree is called an equivocation hitch. Uh, you can also use this with rings. The equivocation hitch is a little bit higher risk, which you'll see in a second. However, there are a couple justifications for it. Uh, firstly, if you're trying to get off a route quickly, uh, using it on rings enables you to not have to pull the rope through the rings every single rappel. So you can get down a lot quicker by avoiding that step. Uh, for trees, the benefit is if I need to rappel off a tree and I wrap a rope around this entire tree and wrap off it and then try to pull my rope, it's a pretty good chance I'm not going to get my rope back because the friction is just too high once the rope is on the rock and the tree combined friction. So an equivocation hitch can help neutralize that a little bit. What you do is you go ahead and take the rope in the middle with a bite, wrap it around the tree, or you would pass this through the rappel rings. Now you have a bite here. Take one of the two strands and pass it through the bite. Take the second strand and pass it through the second bite. Pull the first bite tight. Take the strand you just pulled tight, pass it through the new bite. Pull that bite tight. Again, strand you just pulled tight through the bite you just made. Pull that bite tight. And now for the last one, you'll make a little bit bigger loop. Go ahead and pull tight again. I have a bigger loop because on my rappel, if I accidentally pull this strand, I want some forgiveness. I don't want this loop to make it through because that would put me at risk of undoing the hitch. So the strand I just pulled tight is what I'm going to rappel on. I'm only going to rappel on a single strand. So in this case, it's okay to just use a grigri. Grigri does not require a third hand because the grigri itself is an assisted braking device and that kind of counts as your backup. Go ahead and clip in here. And now I can rappel down. When I get to the bottom, in order to untie this knot, I would take the strand that I did not rappel on, the loose one, and go ahead and pull through the first bite. From there, I'm going to alternate which strands I pull on to undo the braid, just like this. As you can see, there's very little friction when the rope is pulled off the tree versus if I had wrapped the rope around the tree, it would be almost impossible to retrieve the rope. As you can see in a rappelling tutorial, I never actually rappelled in the vertical. I did everything on the horizontal. Of course, one of those reasons is so I could get really good shots and angles of all the techniques. But another reason is because you always want to practice these things on the ground a lot of times first before you get up in the vertical. It's important to note that rappelling is one of the most dangerous things in climbing. It's where a lot of the deaths happen. So be sure that you have your system down pat. If you don't feel totally confident in what you're doing, if your system's not double backed up like you saw in these examples, take a second, try to think of how you can use a system that you're more familiar with to solve the problem. Hey, I hope you found this video useful. Feel free to leave any comments or questions below. I'll get back to them as soon as I can. And we'll see you out on the crag.